I know that it seems like an eon ago because we had uh, we've had World War Three since then. So you can understand why it feels like this almost isn't relevant or it's a story from long in the past. You know, the impeachment is still actually technically going on. And what's funny is now that the, even the Senate Democrats are starting to break with Nancy Pelosi on this. Even they're starting to say that the way she's handling it is not helpful and we need to go ahead and get the ball rolling here now. Before I get into the details, I want to say this whole thing, they know it, we know it, the whole thing's a sham. And I'm not talking about just her holding back the articles of impeachment because we know that's the case. The whole thing is a sham from beginning to end, but specifically on her trying to hold back the articles of impeachment until the Senate gives her her way and gives her what she wants and does things the way that she wants to, the whole thing is a big nothing. Because here's the thing. There is absolutely nothing in the Constitution whatsoever that requires that the Speaker of the House, or the House in general, deliver the articles of impeachment. Once they've taken that vote, it's done. Now, there are rules within the Senate that do somewhat suggest that they do have to wait on those, but the rules of the Senate can be changed and be changed by a simple majority. That's not the case with the Constitution. It's not like they would have to do a a constitutional amendment to amend the Constitution to change the rules. No, this is nowhere in the Constitution. This is nothing but the rules of decorum within the Senate. And so because of that, I wouldn't have any problem. I'm not saying that it's absolutely the right move and this is what they should do, but I would have no problem with Senator Mitch McConnell just changing the rules and saying that once the vote is taken and the final results are tallied up and we know what the results are, then we just go ahead and move along without them having to deliver the papers, as it were. Which is fine for a couple of reasons. First of all, imagine that this were true not only with the Constitu or sorry, the Articles of Impeachment, but with any bill that the House passed, that the Senate was not able to move on it until the House delivered that to the Senate. You do realize that would make the Speaker of the House arguably the most powerful person in the United States government, period, even more so than the president. Because think about this, if that were the case, then whether it was articles of impeachment or any bill that was passed or the budget or whatever, and the Speaker of the House didn't like it, it didn't matter if, you know, 400 people voted in favor of it, the Speaker could say, no, I don't like this bill, I'm just going to let it sit on my desk. Well, then that would mean the Speaker could negate a vote taken by the House, even if he or she were the only person that didn't like the bill, that it was passed in the affirmative by every other person, they could just sit on it and kill the bill. It'd basically be the Speaker of the House's version of a pocket veto. In other words, a, a bill that the President just sits on, but doesn't actually veto it. He just lets it, you know, sit on his desk without signing it. But the Speaker of the House is not supposed to have any such power. That's nowhere in the Constitution. And the idea that the Speaker of the House can just say, you know what, screw you, House of Representatives, I don't like this bill, so I'm just going to not deliver it to the Senate, that completely destroys the balance of power and destroys the purpose of the House of Representatives, which is supposed to be a governing body, not a single person. And I say this as somebody who has some experience in this. I'm a registered parliamentarian. You know, the chairman in a parliamentary procedure, you know, anything that's run by Robert's Rules, any kind of business meeting, the chairman does not have more power than the members. They are a member themselves, and in the case of a tie, they are allowed to vote and break a tie. But ultimately, the chairman has no more power than any one member. The chairman couldn't, for example, hear a vote go a way that they didn't like and say, you know what, I'm the chairman, so I don't care what y'all say. I'm just not going to go for it. Well, that's essentially exactly what Nancy Pelosi is doing. And the irony is it's her party that passed this at her behest. And now she's saying, no, I'm just going to sit on it. You can't do that. If 
they didn't believe that it was ready or they didn't believe that it was going to get a fair trial in the Senate, then what they should have done is delayed the vote, not delayed the delivery of the articles. That's just stupid. And Senator Shelby and 26 other senators actually brought up a really good point in condemning Nancy Pelosi today. One of the things that they claimed, and he, he signed on to this condemnation, that her attempt to control the process of the trial in the Senate violates the separation of powers. I think she's right. Or sorry, I think that he's right. Because you now have the Speaker of the House saying to the Senate, I'm not going to deliver these articles into you until I get X from you. Until you give me this, I'm not going to deliver this duly passed articles of impeachment from the House to you. She's essentially trying to get power in the Senate, which the Speaker is not supposed to have. They're not supposed to be able to, from afar, dictate someone who's not a member of the Senate the way that the Senate is going to conduct business. That is not something that she is allowed to do. And I would say this regardless of who the Speaker was. And one thing that I do find funny about this whole thing is that the fact that they're hanging on and holding on to these articles of impeachment, it's hilarious because, once again, the Democrats have spoken out of both sides of their mouth and don't even realize it. Because you remember that before the articles of impeachment were passed and this process was going on, one of the things that they were all saying it like clockwork, every single one of them was in agreement. They, they kept parroting this talking point. Why don't you wait until the election? They said, oh, we can't do that. This is too urgent. This man is an imminent threat to our democracy. Adam Schiff famously said, and, and he's not the only one, I'm just using him because he was the one that I believe said it first or the one that I heard say it first. He said, well, asking us to do that is like asking us to let Trump cheat on another election. We have to do this right now. We have to shove it through as quickly as possible, because if we don't, then Trump is going to cheat on another election and steal it. Now, I guess Adam Schiff didn't get his own memo because neither of the two charges that were in the articles of impeachment had anything to do with election interference. But <laughs> so there is that. But. It's almost like he forgot what they were impeaching him for for a second. <laughs> but nonetheless, that was the talking point that they all pushed there. And when everybody on the right was criticizing them for shoving this thing through faster than the flash on a Coke binge, they said, well, we have to do it right now. It's a matter of national security. It's of the utmost importance. Trump is destroying our democracy. We have to get this done right now. And then when it comes time to actually deliver the articles of impeachment, they're like, what's the rush? Ah, we'll sit on it for a little while. Whatever. You can't have it both ways, Democrats. You've got to pick one. But if you're sitting there scratching your head and saying, none of this makes any sense, why is it that they were all about getting it rushed through as soon as possible and now have slowed it to a crawl. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, they know that they don't have a case, and they know that once the American people see this and there actually are witnesses that they don't get to control answering these questions, I think they know it's going to blow up in their face, and that's the reason that they're trying to hold out. I think there's another theory that is plausible, is they wanted to see how this thing was going to shake out with Iran, and see if they were going to add another article of impeachment on top of that, which then Donald Trump did a massive victory lap and should have because he handled this about as well as anybody possibly could have. And I think even the Democrats realized it was stupid to go after him on this. Even they've stopped, uh, started to roll back the rhetoric on being pro-Iran now. But the thing is, what it comes down to is, the impeachment is not about an abuse of power. It is not about obstruction of Congress. And the truth is, it's not even about getting the guy out of office. Because they knew that that was not going to happen with the flimsy evidence that they had. I mean, that's the reason they rushed it through. That's the reason they faked President Trump's call. That's the reason that they've said that they had things that they didn't. What it really all boils down to when you get right down to the core of it, is it was about they wanted emotional validation and an emotional catharsis. That's what it all boils down to. They hate Trump. They don't want him in office. They want to pretend that the 2016 election never happened. And because of that, they have done everything in their power for the past, really, three years 
to try to undo all of that. And what an impeachment does, especially one that was passed by the House, is it kind of validates their emotions that Trump shouldn't be in office. And it gives them a catharsis. It's basically the legal version of the crazy transgender lesbian screaming at the sky at how angry they are that Trump's president. That's what this is. It's done a little more formally, and it's done uh, in a way that it's, it has some legal ramifications, but ultimately, that's what it is because it's not based on anything. And they know that. If they thought they had something through the Mueller investigation or they thought they had something in Ukraine, they would have put that in there, but they didn't. And really the question that it boils down to right now is, if that's the case, is Nancy Pelosi ever going to bring the articles of impeachment? Because I think there's at least a decent chance that she doesn't. Because ultimately, the Democrats already got what they wanted. They got that validation, they got the emotional catharsis, they can say that this is an impeached president, because technically he has been impeached now, just like Bill Clinton was technically impeached as well. Now, his actually did go to a Senate trial, but he will forever be an impeached president, just like Donald Trump will be. And so they've already taken their jab. They know it's not going to result in anything good for them. In fact, it will hurt them if this thing goes to a trial in the Senate. It's going to make them look really stupid and really bad. And so I think the smart move now, now granted, I think the smart move would have been never actually moving with articles of impeachment, but I think the smart move now for Pelosi, if I'm in her situation, is I just let it die on the vine and hope that Senator McConnell doesn't adjust the rules. That's what I would hope for. But I think that that is not, I, don't, I think that that might actually be what happens. But really, this should not surprise us about the Democrats. Why do I say that? Because Democrats, they vote on things and, and propose things in the Congress all the time based on their emotions. In fact, that's about 95% of what they do. Whether a bill is effective or not really doesn't matter. Whether or not a bill feels good or not really matters. I mean, you, you need look no further than Obamacare. It caused the average household of four families their premiums to raise by $2,000. And as far as insuring people that were uninsured, it did insure some, but it also kicked a whole bunch of people off of their insurance, and it made insurance more expensive. So it didn't do anything that it was proposed to do, but it did make them feel good. And ultimately, that's what they were looking for. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted in things like Obamacare. That's what they do with most of their legislation. And the impeachment is no different. Ultimately, it is about what makes them feel good, not what actually does good or is effective. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.